accessibility friendly one. Yeah, Xbox has been doing that for a while. Like you, I think Microsoft offers um, like custom controllers for people with certain disabilities so they can play games. That is that is what needs to happen. Toxic gamers are so privileged that they have all their um, their extremities and all in perfect working order that they they can enjoy a game. I had someone in high school who and she, her, she only had one arm, mm -hmm. and she played Gears of War, and she, so she she like finagled the controller in a way to where she can actually play pretty damn well in Gears of War. Mm -hmm. Imagine now with all the 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 disability friendly controllers. She's probably like, if she's still playing Gears of War like on, in the new console, she's probably like like tripled her skill level because there's finally a controller that's for her. Yeah. It's like why would you why would you scoff at that? People don't care. It, I think it boils down to people are selfish. People, people care are about selfish, themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they anything that does not affect them, they don't give a shit about. Yes. It is the Super Clash podcast, a podcast about shorter games. It is episode 81. I'm your host, Kale. And I'm your host, Connor. Yeah. And we're starting this episode a little bit later than usual because we just went on a massive tangent about toxic gamers and accessibility and how the toxic gamers like scoff at accessibility and games and everything. And just it, it got me more mad than it should have. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know what to uh, to say to get you less mad, but uh, hopefully talking about our experiences with games this week will uh, make it a yeah, little better. Yeah, with uh, the first episode, that's kind of the new hybrid format, which I'm actually pretty excited for. Yeah, man. But before we get into, into that, Connor, how was your week? Uh, Pretty exhausting. Yeah. This was my first week back from my holiday break same here and in a couple weeks i will be going to disney um so i have a lot of work and projects that i need to get done for work before that happens and i have to prep for stuff that will happen uh when i get back so yeah i've just been really stressed out this week it was a shorter week too why did four days feel like it's or why did four days feel so slow? I don't know, man. And it just it just felt like it never ended. Like today, oh God, I had three and a half. No, I had four hours of meetings scheduled. One of the meetings went over by 15 minutes. Not a huge deal. Another one of my meetings went over by an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, what? Yes. It just kept going. And like the meeting. I would get so restless. I'm doing Oh, I was definitely restless. But the meetings I had were all in one block. So I literally had to, like, order food to be delivered, get it while I was in the meeting with my mic muted, eat while I was on the thing. Otherwise, I would have not been able to eat any food until, like, probably 4 in the afternoon. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, it was freaking stupid. Yeah. And at my work, it was just really slow. And so... When there's not a lot to do, a lot to do, the day just drags on and on and on. Yeah. So, but on a lighter note, uh, I know last week I talked about my issues with Need for Speed, uh, playing that online. Well, I got it figured out. Mm. I can play online now and and access online and access my trophies. Was it all your fault? I don't. I don't want to say it was, but it was just bizarre, <laughs> because um, it it wanted. It said that my the email linked to my EA account was no longer active, but I signed into my EA account, and one of my emails was the active one. It was really bizarre, and I I talked to um a person or like the live chat, and we got it resolved. I literally just changed it from one email to the other, and it kicked right on. Weird. It it was it was very bizarre. Hmm. But hey, I can. Uh, I think the need need for speed is cross play. Interesting. So, and my brother in law has it for PC, so we can actually play together now. Huh. 
Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, and the I'd... game the game is a lot of fun. That's one I do want to get eventually. It's just it's probably gonna have to wait a little bit for me to get that one, but I, I got it at GameStop for forty five dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna have to probably wait till it hits maybe like twenty. Yeah. But dialogue is still utter shit though. Yeah, that's just that's need for speed. <laughs> yeah. But still, as I said, I can write better dialogue than that. That's yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know. They put all their focus into make cars go vroom vroom, but not <laughs> not the dialogue. Ugh. Dialogue goes goes cancer, cancer. Womp womp. Yeah. But <clears throat> I really don't have anything else other than that. Well, I've been watching some anime this week. I watched um, We Never Learn or Bokuben, I believe it is what they call it. Uh, that one's pretty interesting. It's a lot like quintessential quintuplets, except for there being siblings. There are um, uh, just classmates. So, like, mm -hmm. the, the students being tutored by the main character are all geniuses. But they are only geniuses in one subject. So they need wow. tutoring in their other studies. That is very similar to quintessential quintuplets. Yeah. So, like, uh, one of the girls, she is, like, absolutely phenomenal at, like, anything literature or writing re related. But she's terrible at math and science. And then the other one, she's, like, a math genius. But she's terrible at any of, like, the social things, such as, you know, writing or you know, reading, stuff like that, right? And then there's this other girl who's, she's like Olympic grade good at swimming, but mm -hmm. all of her grades are terrible. So the main character, he's a lot like Futuro is, where he wasn't necessarily like really gifted or intelligent, but he's a really hard worker and a really good at studying. So his grades are really good just from his, you know, sheer effort. And so he's helping them to get better. And so along the way, he's kind of figuring out that while the girls are, other than the, the swimmer, the swimmer actually enjoys swimming, the other two girls, they don't really enjoy English and, and math, respectively. They actually want to pursue a career in the future in the opposing thing. So, for instance, the writer girl... Her mother was, um, I think, an astronomer, and so she got really into stars and constellations, and so she wants to study astronomy, which requires math and science, right? Right. And the other girl, uh, who's, like, really good at math, she actually wants to go into psychology because she finds, like, um, the concept of, like, understanding people and their emotions and, and just human communication to be fascinating. So... You know, they're, they're all trying to learn different things, whereas their previous tutors basically gave up on them and said, just do what you're good at, you know? Mm. So it's really cute. It's really interesting. And I'm actually really curious to pick up the manga next time we're out and about on a manga hunt. Oh, man, those manga hunts. They hurt the wallet, they do. Because I've my wife was looking at it, and she believes that the manga is also done kind of like quintessential quintuplets, where... In the manga for QQ, they're, they basically played out what would happen if Futuro ended up with each of the Nakano quints, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in this one, I guess it plays out like what if he ended up with each of the girls that he helped out, right? So it's very, very similar. But I like it. It's fun. And Good. the there's a long-haired uh, girl in it with blue hair, if you ever watch it. She is so funny and relatable. She's not like most anime characters that are just kind of like oblivious to everything. Mm -hmm. She's very much like she picks up on every little thing. So her internal dialogue is just like constantly like, oh, my God, these people. What the hell are they doing? I can't believe they <laughs> did this. Or like she's like trying to like keep everything together. It's just so funny. She's nice. the best. Awesome. But I'm watching a uh, anime called Beast Tamer. And it's a fantasy that's turning into a harem. I'm into it. All yeah. Right. I'm enjoying it. 
Uh, it's basically about a guy named Rain, who is a beast tamer, who... A beast tamer in this world is looked down upon as like a pretty low ranking class in this in this fantasy world until he comes across a cat spirit uh, whom he forms a bond a bond with and then he starts getting her strength and then later on they he comes across a dragonkin uh, girl who he forms a bond a bond with and he starts getting her magic abilities and it also turns out that Rain is a pretty gifted beast tamer. He is able to do things that not a lot of other beast tamers can do. Okay. And so it's over like it's cute. And I'll I'll just flat out say it's it's adorable. And it's it's a really good anime to watch after a long day. It just has a a, a feel good what's the word I'm looking for? Vibe. Okay, I might have so, to add it to my yeah. I'm I'm enjoying long it. watch list. <laughs> so I, I that's that's kind of something that I, that I kind of discovered about myself coming into anime, where I could really watch about just about anything. Yeah, that's fair. It's, it's like I don't care. Just just as long as I get like fuzzy feelings or or even with action anime that that was really fucking cool. That's that's all I want out of it. That's fair. Also got some anime merch. Yeah, I know. I, I you're wearing one right now. Yeah, got a lot of Spy Family, yeah. Rent a Girlfriend merch. At Hot so. Topic of all places. I know. The, Hot Hot Topic. The 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 few times I was there was just not really doing it for me. But the worker there, she literally took the words right out of my mouth when I was like, she saw me with like a handful of like uh, Spy Family stuff, and she's like. Oh yeah, you're really into the spy family. I'm, she's like, I'm so glad that we got that. She's like, I get tired of seeing all the same uh, stuff, and and she's like, started listing off like, oh, you know, Dragon Ball, Naruto, Demon Slayer, and I was like, yeah, I get kind of tired of all the Shonen merch too. There's thousands of pieces of it everywhere, and she's like, yes. She's like, don't people have enough of it already? <laughs> yeah, like, and don't get me wrong, like, I I would like the Demon Slayer stuff. I do like Demon Slayer, but. I love like Spy Family and Rent a Girlfriend. Um, you have to admit though that the Shonen stuff gets way more attention. It does. Than anything it does. else. And like my thing with that is like I'll watch a Shonen like Demon Slayer, but I need to watch it with something like like some kind of slice of life or, or something. Mm -hmm. It's the best way I can describe it is. A drama like, I don't know, Goodwill Hunting. I'll watch that and, and really enjoy that movie and get like really emotional over it. But every once in a while I just want to watch a John Wick. Yeah. Just it's, just you I think know that's the best thing about Spy Family is you get that cute, wholesome slice of yes. life and you get action like inter yes. intermixed in it. It's perfect. It, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> so but other than that, it's just been mostly a, a stressful week. So so let's go ahead and dive into our topics tonight. What are you doing with my phone? I was going to take it away so you couldn't look at it. Oh, that's really mean. As I have to deal with my 30-second sleep mode on my phone. Uh, do you want me to go first tonight? or? Yeah, go, man, go okay, ahead. Okay, man. Well, uh, this week I played a game called Nobody Saves the World. This is developed by uh, Drinkbox Studios and released in 2022. How Long to Beat says you can beat this in about 14 hours, but I think they missed the ball on that one. It's probably closer to, like, 18 to 20 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's I it's, I think it misses the mark in terms of our format, and that's just out of my control, so, I'll just, so I just rolled with it. I got as far as I could in this game this week. But you can get this for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. And what this is, it is a top-down dungeon crawler RPG where it almost where it follows like almost the same mechanic that was in Helmut, the badass from Hell. Only in this one they do it right. That's good. <laughs> uh for anyone that's new to the show, Connor and I review we we talked about a game called Helmut the Badass from Hell which was a, a top-down twin-stick shooter with the roguelite elements. And they had a genius gameplay hook 
to where you can change forms based on a, on the situation and whatever and if you died in one form it would just be reduced down to three forms and you basically had four lives to in order to get through this dungeon or or through or through the game it was a genius setup but how it missed the mark was you had to go through the game in its entirety to permanently unlock a form. And to me, I thought that was bullshit and not quite the right way to approach the situation. Mm -hmm. So Connor and I ranked that pretty low and I ranked that pretty low just because I was just disappointed with it. Yeah. I I was so excited for that game. Me too. It's let down. But this game, Connor, I would re- really recommend it to you because uh, all, you, you get all your forms. For one, you, you as soon as they unlock, you get them permanently. Nice. Um, you, you can have up to seven forms in your wheel. Uh, and there's like 18 forms total, I think, if you're including the DLC forms. So how the wheel works is just you have – like it uses the last seven that you chose. So Okay. I couldn't quite figure out how to like custom make uh, the wheel, really. I, I tried looking things up. I couldn't quite get a clear answer. But I think if you kind of played with it, you can kind of figure it out. Okay. The, but the story of this is, is when the ancient Calamity reawakens, it's up to a blank slate and a wand of transformation to collect gem shards and dungeons and save the world. You start off as just like this literally nobody as in just like this white fake this white person who then collects a wand from a wizard and then you get your first form which is a rat okay and each form in this game uh has strengths and weaknesses and some can even traverse certain terrains so like the rat can squeeze through like small crevices uh the turtle and the mermaid can swim through water okay and each of these forms, as I said, they, they have unique abilities. So um, one of my favorites was the slug, the slug form. Uh, what How that was is that it, um, it would leave behind slime as you would move forward and would slow down enemies. Ooh. And then it would sh- you could shoot tears out and they did um, – what kind of damage did it do? I think it did blunt damage. And so you, in combination with – uh, them being slowed down and the blunt damage, you could just eat through them. Nice. Um, another unique form was the magician, which is your typical like stage magician with the hat, and he carries around a rabbit, and he attacks people with cards. Uh, the cards have like a little bit of RNG next to it, to where, um, depending on the card that he attacks, will uh, it'll do more more or less damage. Okay. Um. What's also cool about this is because while each form has its own abilities, there's also a bunch of passive abilities that you can unlock, unlock and you can swap them between forms. And you could even like special attacks in forms you can put pin onto other forms. So let's say if I if I'm playing the the knight form, um, I can slap on the uh, the rat's uh, health drain ability. And all of a sudden, I can steal health from enemies as the knight. Uh, how you level up in this game, like um, because each form starts off as an F rank, and then and, and it works up to like an A rank. Um, <clears throat> how you uh how you rise in the ranks is by completing challenges. Each form has has different challenges that you can complete. Like oh, kill this many enemies with with this special attack and so you complete those challenges and you turn them in you get xp which increases the rank of your form and then you get more abilities through that uh there's also another way you can um level up by just completing uh just like quests and everything so and that will raise your base stats so like your health criticals chance your mana and and all that nice um there's a lot in this game that i really enjoyed i love i i wasn't too i'm not usually too crazy about dungeon crawly games just because like 
I find them a little grindy. That can be that way. Yeah. Spe- like, and and this game is really not any different from that because in order to unlock more dungeons to progress the story, you need a certain amount of stars, and you get stars by completing dungeons, um, leveling up, and doing challenges. But some of these dungeons later on ha- need like. 40 or 50 stars which means you have to do a bunch of side quests and other smaller dungeons and really Mm. kind of grind to do it i don't know if i like that it's it's manageable it's nowhere near as grindy as like any kind of like triple a dungeon crawler it's manageable but i still couldn't help but notice notice it a little bit i was getting a little bit tired of trying to go through dungeons and are the, the side quests anything that you would want to do, or are they kind of just a chore? Some of them are fun. Others are just, like, fetch quests. Uh-huh. And, but... Overall, though, what, but the the art, though, is very good. Okay. It's This was made by a small team, and all of it looks like it was hand-drawn and, and put in animation. My favorite animation... I would say is the um the bodybuilder form to where like you have this huge buff dude and he literally throws dumbbells <laughs> at pe- at at enemies. But if you look closely, he's doing that that little peck dance oh. when he's idle. Yeah. But you turn around and he's doing it with his ass. Oh, that's beautiful. It's it is great. <laughs> it's so funny. But <clears throat> what's the tone of this game? Is it more serious or just more like comedic? More more comedic. Okay. Uh definitely and uh, i really do enjoy this game i want to play more if i just had more time this one is definitely it has been on uh my wish wish list on steam since it released i'm hoping at some point it comes on sale so i can grab it yeah i definitely recommend this game nice what would you give it you think oh man probably an eight really yeah it's 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 definitely up there for me uh the the only reason why I give it an eight is while I enjoy like the a little bit of the dungeon crawly aspects and the um the satisfaction when there's a whole bunch of enemies coming at you and you have a form to where you can literally just eat through all those enemies at once. It's very satis- satisfying. I just don't like the ground the um the grindy aspect of it. Okay. So interesting. Yep. <clears throat> that is uh my attempt at explaining nobody saves the world without notes. Hey, works for me. Yeah, I'll I'll get better. I'm, as, <laughs> as, as as we said before, like, and I don't mean to call attention to it. It's just like we haven't actually podcasted in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's kind of hard to get back into it, honestly. Where it's like, I just feel like I'm just like drained of energy too. Yes. from these past few weeks, it's mm. hard to to get your mind back on track and to like have the willpower to actually talk about things. Yeah. And, and also, especially since we're doing this near the end of the day, just being able to have the mental capacity to properly explain yeah. things like I, I would say I'm okay when I'm talking about when I'm not talking about things on the fly, but I, I, I it's, I kind of almost get in my own head. It's, it sucks, man. Yeah, it's all right, but it's whatever. It's our show. I yeah. Just do what you want, man. I don't <laughs> exactly. care. Exactly. All right. What did you play this week, Connor? I played Bladed Fury, and I okay. actually beat it earlier today. Um, this game is uh, developed by Next Studios and released in March of 2020. It's on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And this game kind of took me by surprise a little bit. I didn't know much going into it but this game is a a 2d side scrolling um kind of slice them up very similar to dust um oh, nice but the art style and the setting uh is is like ancient chinese so oh okay all the dialogue is in chinese with subtitles and um the the art style is kind of like kind of like an older Japanese painting. You know how they would paint like mythological creatures like dragons and mm-hmm. such like that. It's very reminiscent of that with kind of like a modern uh cartoony touch to it. It's it's really hard to describe, but it's really gorgeous to look at, honestly. So, um the game 
the the story of this game is that you play as the daughter of this duke and you are going to go into your father's chambers and you see a demon in there and it attacks you and you fight back and kill this demon um, only to find that your father is dead and you are blamed for murdering your father and you have to escape the city. Hmm. Um, and the, the way the game starts out is you have really a primary attack um, where you have a, a quick sword attack you can jump and then you can side dash um as you leave this town you enter this area where there's a lot of mythical beings kind of like these spirit creatures and they bestow upon you this giant sword and also some additional abilities so you get this giant sword that moves much slower but deals more damage and you also get the ability to uh block as well, you get like this shield, and you get these kind of like little scarab beetles. And if you click uh, one of the buttons, you can heal yourself with those, and you get um, increasing numbers of those as the game goes on mm -hmm. to heal yourself mid battle. Um, additionally, uh, these these beings kind of send you on this quest uh, to take out some of these evil spirit so you are going through what i believe is technically the underworld the story is kind of convoluted in a way but i think the more important part of this game is the gameplay so as you progress through the game you encounter these various demons sort of things or spirits and by completing their level and defeating the boss of each level you gain a spirit ability and you can have up to four of them at once but you can unlock six different ones and so the first one you unlock is a black hole ability so you can spawn a black hole which sucks in the enemies and does consistent damage to them oh nice the second one is an arrow ability so you can call in arrows that rain down from above on a selected area uh, the next one is a healing ability, which comes in handy if you run out of your little beetles that heal you. So you can call this in and it will full heal you. Uh, the next one is like a uh, spider webs that come across the screen, which slow down the enemies, which is perfect for chaining with other abilities. Um, you get an ability where you pull out this giant cannon and you can shoot this <laughs> cannon. Uh, you get... What's the other one here? Um, oh, oh, yeah. There's this ability that comes out and it does damage to everything that's on the screen, basically. And so you can pick four of these and then you can combine that with your different uh, melee abilities. So you have your quick moves and your heavy moves. And then as you progress, you unlock little experience points and you can redeem those to unlock additional combos and abilities. Mm -hmm. And you can chain these different abilities, kind of stack them up, kind of get strategic with it. One of my favorite things to do was to um, throw the spider webs out and then pull out the giant cannon thing when they can't move and just blast them with it and then just wailing on them with combos. That was a good way to handle it. Um, the enemy types in the game are very different from level to level. So they're all based on different kinds of spirits. Like for instance, one of the ones you go to is you go to like a bathhouse. So mm -hmm. you have these kind of like geisha looking, uh, characters. You also have like these warriors, you have these beasts, you have people riding on horseback and you have basic enemies that you can just take down their health bar immediately. And then there are glowing yellow enemies that are a lot more challenging. So they have essentially two health bars. They have like a shield bar and a regular bar. And while their shield bar is full, um, they don't flinch when you hit them. So they can knock you back as you're trying to do damage to them. And so you want to knock that shield off and then start hitting their regular health bar. That said... Um, they can regen that health or that shield bar. So if you don't knock them out really quick after taking down their shield, they'll shield back up and mm. you have to fight them. Um, 
And the bosses that you fight are, they typically have one giant health bar that um, doesn't necessarily refill, but it changes colors as it goes down. So it's like a dark red, and then it kind of goes to like a lighter red, and then it goes down to empty, right? Hmm. Uh, they're not particularly challenging. Okay, good. It, it, it's, it can be a tough game, depending on the difficulty level you put it on. I don't think it is a unfair or punishing game, though. It, it's it's very fun. Uh, there's some puzzle aspects to it as well uh, that you have to kind of solve on certain levels. You have to go through and, and figure out how to solve these kind of unique puzzles. Like one of them that I remember is being particularly challenging was at the bathhouse. So at the bathhouse, you had uh, these tiles that you had to put in place. And each tile would, un if you connected a path, it would unlock a different door. And there were four different doors. But within the doors, there were other doors. So you had to, after you opened the first four, completed the bosses, you had to then figure out how to open the doors within the doors and defeat those bosses as well. It was kind of an interesting thing. I think that was probably the most challenging part of the game was figuring out what I needed to do there. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, it wasn't too bad. Uh, the game, without any spoilers here, kind of culminates to you eventually going to confront the uh, person who accused you of killing your, your father. And he has a ancestral spirit that he sends after you, you know, because the game is basically you defeating these spirit creatures. The game is kind of ambiguous with its story, though. And I don't know if that's intentional or maybe it it's a translation thing, because I want to say that um, the studio that I mentioned, I think it was Next, they are a Tencent subsidiary. And Tencent, if you know, is a Chinese game development company. So mm -hmm. it could be a translation thing. But the uh, the story kind of ends almost insinuating that your sister, who you were also trying to save during this, um, might have become evil. I don't really understand because the, the bad guy will say like, oh, like, release her, blah, 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 when you confront him. And then you never see her except in, like, the end, like, credits area. And then she looks like she's, like, evil or something. So it's like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really get it. But uh, overall, this game is a lot of fun. Uh, the combo system is great. The controls felt really good. The art style was wonderful, in my opinion. Uh, I think where it kind of fell down a little bit was the, the story. It was a little bit convoluted. There wasn't really a clear directive or reason why you were going after these spirits other than to just kind of redeem yourself, I suppose, and, and eventually confront your accuser. But, eh, you know, I, I don't know if that was main, the main point of it. But I think given that it wasn't really a fully well-rounded game, it was just enjoyable. So I think I'd have to give it like a 7 out of 10. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, hope I did a good job of explaining. Oh, you it. did. Much better than me. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm telling you, man, it's like it's my ADD brain. And, oh, and I didn't mention how long this game is to beat, but it's about four, four and a half hours nice. to beat. Oh, not yeah. too bad at all. No, that's 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 a weekend. Yeah, it's totally manageable. I almost beat it in one sitting. I got all the way to the last two levels and then I beat those uh after work before you got here. Nice. So, yeah. So but Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna play next week, my man? Uh, I'm gonna be playing uh, Trigger Witch. I'm gonna I'm gonna t use uh, that as an excuse to finish Trigger Witch. That's a good game. It is, and I I, I can't wait for us to discuss that. Yeah, one. I because <laughs> and I figured um, because with the with the, with the uh, with the hybrid format, I figured I'd try it out by choosing a game that we both played, and so we can kind of have. A, have a bit of a conjoined discussion before we kind of veer off into a game that you played uh, the, the next week. We still, it's a, probably going to be a better, shorter episode 
uh, this week just because we're still kind of getting reacclimated to uh, podcasting again. Well, plus, I mean, we didn't have a whole lot going on this week other than crummy work related stuff. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, other than playing the games that we did for this, it's not a lot, but. Um, for next week, I'll be playing a game called Iris Fall. Okay. Made by the same studio. It was actually in a double pack, so I decided to play this one, too. It's a completely different game, though, because I started a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to give that one a try. It looks, it's like a, a black and white puzzle game. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's interesting so far. I was struggling with it, and I kind of rage quit before you got here. So, uh, oh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. 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 It was a Rubik's Cube level, and it sucked. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't even do a real U uh, Rubik's Cube. Yeah, it was like you had to... I'll explain more later, but you have to basically like change a Rubik's Cube around to where the lights that are coming off of these squares hit these shapes, but you can't see every side of the Rubik's Cube. You can only see like one corner of it. Mm. It's it's a nightmare for so far, so... Yeah. <laughs> my, I don't think my brain can handle that. <laughs> not not at least without medication. <laughs> but uh, Like and subscribe if you like the show, or if you don't like the show, tell your friends. Maybe they'll like it. We also have uh, merch, which will be in the description. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.